One evening, you were asked by your mom to clean the leftovers off of a table. Seeing all the food, you can help but wonder, what will happen to it? What can we do with it? These questions are the same questions that have sparked in the minds of many people over a long period of time. Even back in 589 to 618 AD, the Su Dynasty China. At that time, there was someone amongst the people of the Su Dynasty that had concerned about leftover rice. After thinking long and hard, suddenly he got an idea. He grabbed the leftover meat, eggs, garlic, and vegetables, and fried it all up together with the leftover rice. And voila! He just invented them one of the world's most famous leftover dishes. Fried rice. Today, we can find fried rice in all over the world. It's still not clear that fried rice was made popular by the Chinese or made independently by itself in many places. But today, we can find several fried rice that made by the influences of Chinese. A roast chocha from Portugal, nasi goreng from Indonesia, bokumbap from Korea, a roast frito from Cuba, and many more. But one question must be popped into your mind. Can we make fried rice without the leftover? Interesting question. But if you ask the people in the Su dynasty, the most likely answer will be no. The reason behind this is the fresh rice when being fried turns out to be soggy and mushy, while the leftover rice creates delicious fried rice that barely clumps together and evenly seasoned. As science evolved, the reason behind that is uncovered, not because of the stale state of the rice, but rather because of the moisture content. When you make fried rice, you will be introducing moisture back into the rice. If your rice has just been cooked, you are simply going to continue to introduce moisture to already moist rice. The result is overcooked mush. On the other hand, the leftover rice is rice that rests long after cooking. As the rice rests after cooking, there is two phenomena that happen. First is the water transport. Freshly cooked rice has a higher moisture concentration, contrary to the air surrounding it. The difference in moisture concentration forces moisture to be expelled from the rice grain as a way of reaching moisture equilibrium between the rice and the air, thus making the rice drier. The second phenomenon that takes place is the starch retrogradation. Rice is high in starch content, which comes in the form of partially crystalline granules. Retrogradation is the process of bringing starch back into its initial state. Starches that have swollen up during cooking will recrystallize over time at low temperature, returning to their initial state, forcing water out and turning the rice firmer. The longer the rice grain rests in lower temperature, the more the rice will recrystallize, the firmer the rice grain will become. These two phenomena can happen simultaneously, making leftover rice have a lower moisture content than fresh cooked rice. When you make fried rice using the leftover rice, which has a lower moisture content, the final result of moisture in the rice grain will be on point enough to create rice that will barely clump together and will taste delicious. A scientific reasoning of using the leftover rice has been discovered. A more advanced development on fried rice can be made. Today, people can create the perfect fried rice from either the fresh or leftover rice by modifying the moisture content. This can be done by selecting grain of rice that has a lower moisture absorption capability or cooking rice with less water or fanning the moisture away from the rice, and much more. This technique can be applied not just in the kitchen, but even in a larger environment, on industrial level. Thanks to science, now, everyone, wherever you may be, or whatever the time may be, can enjoy fried rice, the leftovers that have evolved and have become a food that has stolen the hearts of many.